Okay? So 2x minus 3y equals 4. If we let y equal 0, we find 2x equals 4, so x equals 2. So that the point 2, 0 lies on the graph. Well, here's 1, 2, 3. This x stands for the point 2, 0. It's on the graph of this equation. Now again, this is a linear equation. It's a straight line. We could solve for y and put it in slope-intercept form to convince ourselves, but it's very clearly a linear equation. And of course, this is one of the standard forms of a linear equation. So we hopefully recognize that from our algebra and pre-calculus. Okay? Well, if we let x equals 0, we find that y is, what, negative 4 thirds. So we have a point where x is 0 and y is negative 4 thirds. That's this point. Now we do the same for this equation. We get a point here, um, and this point's going to be 7 fourths, which is just a little less than 2. So this point's going to be just a little bit to the left of this one. And this point is going to be 0, 3 halves, 7 halves, 0, 3 and a half, way up here. So this line's going to be steep here. And the two lines are going to intersect pretty close to this point to, uh, yeah, 2, 0 but a little bit below the x-axis and a little bit to the left of 2, 0. Well, our solution was 29 sixteenths, negative 1 eighth. The x-coordinate should be 29 sixteenths, 32 sixteenths is 2, so this is a little to the left of 2, just as this intersection point is. And negative 1 eighth is a small number. You know, this is 1, negative 1, well, this would be negative 1, negative 1 eighth would be about here. And that certainly looks like the intersection point might be at y equals negative one-eighth. So we confirm our solution. So if our two equations give us straight lines with different slopes, they have to intersect. And this is how we can find the intersection. We can do the matrix reduction, which is easier than writing out all the x's and y's, and it means the same thing. Um, or we can write out the equations and do it, but we're going to do it by matrices. Okay? Now, it's possible the lines are parallel. They never meet. What happens if they are? Well, here is an example of two parallel lines. Let's see what happens. Now, they're parallel because if you put each of the, either of these in slope-intercept form, you're going to find that uh, you're going to have a negative 3y on this side and a negative 2x on this side. When you solve for y, you're going to have what? A 2 thirds um, for your slope. Here, you put it in slope intercept form, and you should probably do that. You just need to reinforce that for many purposes. Not so important for this course, but it is kind of important here too. But for many other courses, it's even more important. <coughs> you're going to have a negative 12y on this side, a negative 8x over on this side. And you're going to have a slope of negative 8 over negative 12, which is 2 thirds. So these two lines would have the same slope. Now, if we put them into matrix form and reduce the matrix, okay, well, what do we do? We want a 1 here. That's the first thing we want. You've got to get used to that process. You've got to practice it. We need a 1 here, so we take half of the first row. And then we add negative 8 times the first row to the second row, and we get this. Now look at what happened. We got a 0 here. But at the same time, we got a zero here. That didn't happen before. Okay? But it happens now, and it will always happen if your lines have the same slope, because these numbers will be in the same proportion as these numbers. Okay? So what does this equation mean? Well, this equation means 0x plus 0y equals 14. 0x plus 0y equals 14. Well, 0x is 0. 0y is 0, so the left-hand side is 0. So it says that 0 equals 14, but 0 can't equal 14, which means that these equations can't intersect. And that'll always be the case, except when it isn't, which would be like over here, so let's illustrate this. Same situation. I've got the same numbers on the left-hand side, but I put a 16 here instead of a 30. So here's my matrix. If I go through the same steps, my second equation becomes 0, 0, 0. Okay, well, what happened? Uh, 
okay, first place, and I didn't get to write it down in class, but this just says that 0 equals 0. 0x zero plus 0y zero is 0, and we got a 0 on the right-hand side. This is true, which means that these equations give you lines that not only intersect, but they intersect at every point. Any x and y that satisfies the first equation automatically satisfies the second equation. So every point on the graph of this equation is a point on the graph of this equation, and vice versa. So your two lines coincide. And you have infinitely many solutions.